Hi guys, Sarah here from Budget Savvy Diva. I thought it would be a lot of fun to do one of those uh, things you don't know about me uh, videos but make it like a cooking edition because cooking is such a huge part of my life that I want to share with you guys some like I think I have 10 things that you guys almost I would say 99.9% .9 you don't know about me in terms of cooking so I'm just gonna get started and hopefully this video won't go too long number one um, my mom was a huge advocate of my cooking when I was younger, especially baking. I remember baking cookies and cakes with her all the time when I was younger, and she is not the best baker, but she used to tell me I've never met, I was never able to meet my grandmother, but she said that I you know, bake just like her mom and that I had this like innate ability to bake, which is true. I've never had anything completely spoil on me like completely like you get a cake and it's like not baked I've never had that even like when I was three or four I mean I could just start you know doing the flour sugar eggs you know and actually making cakes without like any problem so um baking has been a huge part of my life I would say that compared to um you know, cooking with crock pots or casserole cooking, baking, I mean, is huge. There was a point in my life that I actually wanted to open up uh, a bakery. My dad and I, we cooked dinner together every single night. We still do once a week. I cook and he cooks um, dinner for my family. And yeah, I, he's my little, he's my little sous chef. He's now my sous chef. I used to be his sous chef, but somewhere along the lines it switched. And uh, we were great together. His dad was actually a butcher. And um, what's great about that is I know my way around the cow. I mean, you know, being able to go into a supermarket and being able to know what cuts meats are from where and what's gonna be great, you know, braising like you know using um you know like a chuck roast in the slow cooker that sort of thing and how to make it amazing you know it's one of these things where uh the lesser cuts of meats meaning the tougher cuts of meats are amazing in the slow cooker if you know how to use it correctly slow and low will tenderize the meat especially when you have a marinade on it again um I have some exciting news, but this is not the video for it, but I am starting to work on um, my second book, which is going to be a full-fledged cookbook, and there is going to be a huge section on everything I know about meat from my childhood growing up. This book is really going to be about uh, you being in the kitchen with me because it's more than just recipes for me. It's like what I grew up with and a way of living. All right, so enough about that because there's going to be a lot of talk about that later on um so again like you know cooking and loving to cook i actually i went to university of southern california if you did not know and i was actually in their cooking club um tommy's kitchen because tommy trojan is our mascot so um you know, love, love of cooking. I didn't just like think of one day, I'm on my blog, I'm gonna start posting recipes. No, it's, I was in the cooking club and I remember, uh, you know, we would have 20 people and everybody would do their own thing. I mean, they're making a sushi or, or scalloped potatoes. We would have like a different theme for every time we had the club. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you pay $5 at the door and that pretty much paid for everything we would make all these different things and it was a lot of fun uh, meeting different people because um, I didn't live on campus and I worked as well so it was really nice being able to interact with people that I went to school with especially in such a large school and they were like oh wow you know a lot about cooking also on top of that I've done a lot of cooking classes um, myself a lot of sauce classes I'm obsessed with sauces that's something that a lot of readers don't know about is I pride myself with sauces, I love a good reduction. Oh, give me a good reduction any day. Good reduction and meat. Oh, awesome. And a compound butter. Oh, I'm in heaven. And make it gluten free. All right. Um, number four. Okay, so I don't talk about this one a lot because I don't want you guys to think I'm a little weird, but I mean, it makes sense. Um, I have a lot of energy if you can't tell and a cooking has been very th uh, therapeutic for me I have um, I've been I was diagnosed in middle school with ADD 
through high school. I was on Concerta, which is slow releasing Ritalin, and it really helped me. Um, but one thing is I do have a lot of extra energy. I have to keep on doing something. I always have to be thinking. And at night, you know, I had trouble sleeping, especially in high school and college, just because um, I wanted to do well on those tests. I mean, getting the straight A's was really important important to me. My parents were awesome, never put pressure on me, but it was to me doing the best of my ability and um, I would worry. You know, I'm a worry ward. I just would worry throughout the night and I wouldn't be able to get to sleep. So what I would do is I would bake. Again, going back to that baking and um, baking fresh bread is a love for me. I love, love making a wonderful like rosemary loaf of bread. We had a huge rosemary tree um, where I lived in Lower Canyon in California, in, right? Like it's basically Hollywood Hills. And making a rosemary loaf or um, baking a cake. And I just love the fact that my parents would wake up and there would be all these, not all a ton of baked goods. Like I would bake a cake and be like, okay, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to go to sleep or I would bake some bread. So they would wake up and I would love the fact that they had breakfast already ready for them or I would make like apple turnovers or bear claws, that sort of thing, or cinnamon muffins or baked oatmeal. The list goes on. As long as I was baking and when I would finish, I'd be like, okay, I'm ready to go to sleep. I don't know if any of you guys are like that, but um, it worked for me and I still do it to this day. Like those coffee cupcakes I make uh, for my husband, I'll do that. Like if I can't sleep, I'll bake this for him. So it's an ongoing tradition that it just helps me focus on something and I'm able to be creative, finish something, and then my mind's able to be like, okay, now you can go to sleep. All right, so that was a little weird, but um, it makes sense. All right, um, okay, so this one's interesting. Again, kind of with the same thing of not being able to fall asleep because I'm worrying about something. And nowadays, um, I don't worry as much because, you know, I kind of have my own, you know, psych going on and I kind of run the show, that sort of thing, but I still worry, you know. And how I come up with recipes is this. All right, and um, let me see. Okay, there's another one. I wrote these all down, but there's another one that like is connected to this. But what I do is, um, when I'm going to sleep, I play a game, and um, I'll think, okay, what do I have in my refrigerator? Okay, I have chicken. I have, and then I have potatoes, and then I I create recipes. So for me, recipes aren't just like. I know I've had like readers be like, how can you come up with all these recipes? There's no possible way. Da, da, da. Oh yeah, there is. Like anybody who knows me knows that I can whip up recipes in my mind in a matter of like seconds. So what I do is I create like a, um, I almost feel like it's music where I take like a protein, like, okay, let's say chicken. And then, you know, you want to create something like, um, soft and silky with it. Okay, we're gonna give it some cream cheese so it's kind of like this creaminess. But then you can't just have like that creaminess. You need to have a, a pop, you need to have it a hit. Okay, let's do in some red pepper flakes. So that gives it, you know, you have a base, you have a cream, and then you have a pop of something. But then you need to give it some like um, body. So let's put some like roasted, you know, potatoes in it. But that's not going to be enough. You need to have some little earthiness. So let's put some herbs in it. Let's do some thyme, a little bit of rosemary in the roasted potatoes. And we can have that on kind of like a side. So let's, uh, you know, boil the potatoes. Let's not use roasted potatoes. Let's use, you know, uh, the the golden ones, the, the, the white ones. I totally forgot the name. But, you know, not just, you know, roast them. Let's boil them a bit so they get a little soft. So they're going to have a crunchy outside with a little bit of olive oil and then a soft, creamy inside. And that's going to go perfect with the cream cheese that I have on the chicken. Okay, I just like created like a recipe. I have no idea what I've been just talking about, but that's how I do it. I, I want to like, you create a base and then you have something like soft or, or creamy with it or something to like really compliment it. And then I like to have a hit of, hit of something, a hit of something like that tickles your throat a little bit. And I tone it down with my recipes just a little bit because I know a lot of people are making it for kids. But uh, that's why you'll notice a lot of cream cheeses or cheeses in my recipe and then a lot of hit with um, pepper or cayenne just with a little hint so um 
And that's how I create my recipes. So I'll think of these things while I'm sleeping. So I'll then I'll have, or trying to go to sleep, then I'll have a notebook next to me and I'll write everything down. So that's how I do that. I, I don't know how other people who have blogs come up with their recipes, but I try and do almost no research with my recipes just because it's so second nature. I mean, I've been cooking in the kitchen like right when I was standing. And it's one of these things that's in, been a passion. I wrote cookbooks when I was in elementary school. I remember like getting the white pieces of paper and I had those markers that you know you could smell and um, drawing what it would look like and writing the recipe. And then um, I would glue, you know, creating a binding. And um, I have those, those cookbooks still and it's just been a passion of mine. I think I've, created over a thousand recipes that I'm just slowly like working through. I have notebooks upon notebooks upon notebooks and they are not all winners. Let me tell you that. They are not all winners. My my family will attest to that. Sometimes they eat something in my mouth. No, nobody should eat this. I'm like, okay, okay, I won't do that again. <laughs> all right, um, number six. Okay, again with the baking. You know, I'm, when I was working um, at Disney, Disneyland, I was also um, going to school at USC. And I would bake for them. And it was something that I kind of had forgotten about until my book signing in Los Angeles when um, somebody from who I used to work with was actually there. And I thought, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about the baked goods I would used to make. So again, I was creating all these recipes even before I had a site and I would write them down and I was trying to, um, I try and make things healthier or taste better. So I um, would bake like brownies with applesauce and I would test things out, more vanilla, less vanilla, and I would bake them and I would like go to work at nine and then 10.30 I would have my first break and then we would be gone and then I would have to ask them, so what did you like more? And they were always gone and um, I just love making people happy with my baked goods and seeing what they liked more, what they didn't like more. Um, bringing, brownies was a big one. I brought cookies sometimes. Not breads, just because those were like more for my family, but always like cookies and brownies. Anything with a little sh extra sugar to make them a little bit more peppy. Anything to add, like, you know, have an extra smile on their face because they're at Disneyland and, and that's especially when I was working at attractions. I worked, um, if you, I started working at Soaring Room for California, that was my first, and then I went to Monster Sink, uh, Dark Ride, and then I became trainers in both, and then I did a bunch of other stuff. But you're, if you're ever at Soaring or Monsters, say, oh, hi, did you ever work with Sarah, Budget Savvy Diva? Especially Monsters, that was my home, so basically, like, people know me there. It's awesome. I, I just went back, and I got off the ride, and there were, like, tons of people. It was so amazing. Okay, um... Number seven, reading cookbooks as a kid. Yeah, like most people read like Goosebumps or uh, I don't even know other like you know little kids books. I was reading cookbooks. I need to find it. I have this cookbook my mom gave me, and it is like this kids cookbook, but I love it. And it came with measuring spoons that I use to this day. I just have always devoured cookbooks. My mom, um, because she took it out every year to make the pecan pie for Thanksgiving, was the joy of cooking cookbook. And I would just read that thing front to cover, front to cover, like back cover. Um, I just love the idea of knowing how to make yummy food. I love food, I love yummy food and just being able to get that knowledge was fantastic to me. And, you know, it was one of these things where um, my parents were very big about letting me explore, you know, the cooking field and um, that I would find like recipes. And, you know, my dad and I would go to the farmer's market in Hollywood and pick up all the fresh veggies and, you know, we would cook, so it was awesome. All right, I'm like getting teary-eyed a little bit thinking how much like growing up and cooking. Okay, don't cry. All right, um, so that brings us to number eight, which is the cooking game. Um, so one thing that I used to do as a kid, again, think of me, I have a lot of energy, always had a lot of energy, and my mom always says I had to like entertain myself because 
regardless of how much stimuli there was around, I had to have more. I just um, would make up like little games. So one thing I made up was the cooking game. And this kind of goes with the um, whole, like, how I come up with the recipes now. But with the cooking game is I made flashcards for, for myself from um, note cards. And I would be like, chick or lettuce or all the different spices and then it was kind of one of these um, I would shuffle them and then I would pull out like five things I would guess it's kind of like um, chopped is now and having come up with like a recipe from that but I would pull five things um, there would be different sections too so I would have like a protein pile and I would have a season pile I would have a starch pile yeah I know five years old and knowing about starches veggies fruits that sort of thing and I would pull them out and I would come up with a recipe to tie them all together so it's been this training pro it's been crazy my parents like are like crazed about it too that everything I did when I was younger has prepared me for where I am now it's insane that the little things that you do as a child you know develop into what you're going to be now I mean it's insane like you know thinking back and be like yeah that was a little weird that you did that but now I see how it works so that was that um number nine so it kind of goes with the cooking game um I had American Girl dolls I had Molly and Felicity and one that looked like me if you don't know what American Girls are I'm sorry um it's hard to describe but basically there's dolls and what I would do is I would play with dolls but it would be I would cook for them so again I would take like what cards I pulled my mom got me an American Girl doll when I was like three and then I would come up with a recipe and then I would pretend make it <laughs> and then I would serve it to them so it was one of these things here I just would like pretend make it but I would be like okay I need to preheat the oven to 350 you know again reading the joy of cooking cookbook and being and memorizing okay you know, what does poultry have to be at to be able to be, you know, eaten at? Or, you know, it's very important that when you put the, um, the measuring, like, heat, heat measuring stick in, that's what I call the heat measuring stick, but I meat thermometer. I always call it the heat measuring stick. Um, you know, remember, don't hit the bone. The bone is very important that you don't hit the bone, that you have to hit through the meat because that's going to give you an accurate reading than me being five years old and explain to my American girl Molly about that. It's very important that you don't do that. Um, I remember that. Giving cook cooking lessons to my dolls. Oh my gosh. Okay, so then I have one more thing. And this is just an overview of why I like to cook. I love making people happy. That's just... Um, you know, really important to me. You know, being able to cook for my coworkers or cooking for my family. And it's just amazing that I have a ability with my blog to reach so many amazing, wonderful families and readers to, you know, give them my recipes because it's something that I could tear it up again, um, worked really hard for. And um I love how Watson's just like chilling over there and not like caring that I'm crying. And um, there we go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and sorry that I'm crying now. Okay, bye.